be a part of the Blood Brothers digital experience. I'm gonna make DTFC champions on FIFA. I want one of you to come and join us. You need to go and register at esoccerchampionships.com and the opportunity of representing DTFC. We let our uh, football do the talking, whether it's on the pitch or whether it's digital. United stand was easy, 7-0. And AFTV, 5-1 in the final. <laughs> Hey, DTFC! Football. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, bro. look at this guy. Yeah. 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 Oh. Who's gonna finish bottom? You, blood! You. <laughs> <laughs> How we doing, guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now, on today's show, we're gonna be talking about the Premier League because they are in talks to move the transfer window from August until October. Um, we're also gonna be talking about Manchester United because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has said that any player he buys will not be a rotten apple. Um, and the last piece of news involves Arsenal because apparently um, they are showing an interest in Norwich right back Max Ahrens. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start is the Premier League and the news that um, I think all of us did expect uh, with everything being shifted around because of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and that is that they are looking to move the transfer window from August until October. Um, the Football Association is in discussion uh, to move the transfer window. Uh, the window in England is currently scheduled to open on June the 18th, but that is not expected to go ahead. Uh, the current Premier League season will resume the same week and will continue into July while the final nine rounds of fixtures are completed. FIFA are set to provide guidance on the parameters between which new windows can be set and it is down to the individual associations to finalise specific dates. Uh, the FA is also consulting with other associations across Europe and there is said to be some consensus over a deadline of Friday, October the 2nd. Uh, the French Football uh, Federation opened their domestic window on Monday with their leagues having already been cancelled due to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, but they are also said to be looking at the August to October window for international transfers. The Italian Football Federation, meanwhile, have already confirmed the transfer window will take place from September the 1st to October the 5th, with a Serie A season also set to resume later this month. So... I think we all kind of expected this news and it was obviously going to happen because, you know, with the season still going on, you can't expect a transfer window to be open because clubs have other objectives and other, you know, scenarios that they need to be dealing with. Um, and I suppose a lot of clubs will want to know where they stand next season, you know, um, relegation. Will clubs, you know, not be in the Premier League anymore, for example, and that could have a big say on what happens to some of those players that they currently you know have um champions league football europa league football there's so many permutations which have got to be sorted first before we look at transfer markets and um, i think it's a sensible one the only thing that i will say is that i feel that every organization needs to fall into line with each other because it's not worth having, you know, the English window open in a one period and the Spanish in another and then the French and the German and the Italian and everything else. And then you've got, you know, certain windows to buy a certain player from a certain, you know, country and it just gets too confusing. So let everybody have the same window. It opens at the same time it closes at the same time and then it's pretty straightforward stuff so hopefully they can get that sorted out and um, we'll see what happens in due course no doubt uh, next piece of news involves Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, and he has said that he will be um, avoiding to buy rotten apples as Manchester United manager insists new signings must reflect his personality uh, Solskjaer signed Harry Maguire, Daniel James and Aaron Wan-Bissaka in his first summer transfer window as a United boss in an attempt to shape a new-look team around a core of ambitious young British players. 
Uh, Portugal international Bruno Fernandes then arrived at Old Trafford from Sporting Lisbon in January, followed by the loan signing of Nigeria striker Odian Angalo. Um, and United continue to be linked with more domestic and foreign talent this summer. Uh, despite the coronavirus pandemic potentially affecting any big money transfers this year, Solskjaer says any player he adds to his squad in the future will have to buy into the club's collective philosophy. Um, I did feel that I was professional and did feel privileged to play for Manchester United. Um, I wouldn't be able to look at myself if I didn't know I'd given everything for my teammates and my manager. Uh, that's what I also now look for in players that we sign or bring up from the youth team. Uh, you have to have a good personality and that you are professional because of rotten apples in the basket will make the others rotten. Uh, so for me, it's about building a team that will reflect me and my coaching staff's personalities and views. Of course, there are standards because we want to win. We're in the business to win. But the first step to be a Manchester United player and person, you have to be humble enough to know you'll always have to work hard, never give in and always do your best. 100% effort is required every day and don't think you are better than you are. So that's a bit of an interesting one. And I've seen a few takes on that from Manchester United fans and some are saying that, you know, maybe speaking about the likes of Paul Pogba. Um, I wouldn't read too much into it. I think that some people are using that as an easy way of going at him. I think what he's saying is pretty standard stuff. You don't want rotten apples within your squad because it does affect other people. Um, despite how great he was at Arsenal, we look at Alexis Sanchez and there was talk of problems in the dressing room with him and certain players and it just didn't work out. Um, and we've still got some issues now, apparently. Um, so yeah, I can see what he's saying. Um, and yeah, look, if Paul Pogba is one of those and you are to believe a lot of the stuff that gets said about him and what he does at Manchester United behind the scenes, then um, maybe he's not the player that Solskjaer wants. And um, when you're looking at some of the names that are being mentioned at joining Manchester United, maybe that's because Pogba is on his way out. But when you look at some of the training pictures of him, he looks very happy and very content at life. Uh, with Manchester United, but it remains to be seen what Solskjaer wants to do. And no doubt um, everything will become more clearer in the summer when the season's done and we know where Manchester United finish and what um, Solskjaer wants to do going forward. So um, I agree with him in that sense that you don't want rotten apples in the club and you want to have a good personality and you know a good work ethic from the players. That's for sure. I agree with him on that. Uh, last piece of news involves Arsenal. And apparently um, they have joined the race with their North London rivals Tottenham in the chase for Norwich defender Max Ahrens. But they, of course, are unwilling to match the £30 million asking price for the player. We ever heard that one before. Uh, Max Ahrens has been one of the few positive aspects um, in what has been a season of struggles for the Canaries. And he has shone in the fullback position despite their difficult Premier League campaign. Uh, the 20-year-old right-back will almost certainly move on in the summer if Norwich are relegated to the Championship and Spurs are amongst the teams who have been most strongly linked with his signature. But according to reports, the Gunners are very interested with manager Mikel Arteta known to be keen on strengthening his defence. Um, however, it is believed Spurs are currently favourites to land Aarons due to their stronger financial situation with Arsenal unlikely to be able to afford Arteta much in the way of money for transfers due to the coronavirus pandemic. Hold on a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This report is from the goal as well. And they're trying to say that Spurs are in a stronger financial situation than Arsenal. Well, no, they're not, actually. They've just had to borrow £175 million from the Bank of England because they're getting no revenue and they've just moved into their new stadium which cost an unbelievable amount and was well over budget. Spurs have not got more money than Arsenal to spend. If they go and sell one of their prize assets like a Harry Kane, then yeah, they would have money. But as it stands, nah, absolutely no chance. Sorry, but I'm trying to report the news and relay what I see for you guys. But nah, sorry, I'm not buying that. Spurs ain't got more money. Absolutely no chance. Um, it also goes on to say that Norwich are reluctant to let arguably their best player leave for anything less than £30 million. 
especially given he only signed a new five-year contract last year. And for that reason, the Gunners may be priced out of a move for the England under-21 international. So, yeah, I kind of take that report with a pinch of salt, to be quite honest with you. Um, Max Ahrens, I've mentioned his name before. I'd love to see him at Arsenal if we do get rid of the likes of Hector Bellerin. Um, quality player. Um, definitely would fit the mould that Mikel Arteta wants to bring into the club. Um, but yeah, it looks you know, very much like Norwich are going to be relegated. They're way, way adrift at the bottom. And um, they're not going to get any survival, in my opinion. So Max Ahrens will leave. Will the coronavirus pandemic change things in terms of the price? Probably not, given the fact he's got four years to run on a contract. So Norwich can dig their heels in and get what they want. But it's an interesting one. And um, yeah, I definitely would like to see him at Arsenal. But nah, not... Um, Spurs in a better financial position than Arsenal right now. Absolutely behave yourself. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like on this video. And I will see you a lot tomorrow. I'm out of here.